our contributions in education will be our legacy in this industry. Whether it's through live education or maybe through social media, we're always trying to make a personal connection with you, the learner. At Fanvia, we believe our smile is our business card and our personality is our logo. And how we make people feel after you experience our education and tools is our trade. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us, my friends, and be a part of the Sandia community. What's up, Samvia community? It's Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Samvia, with another Wellness Wednesday. No guests this week, you just get a one-on-one -on -one with me today. We're going to be talking about something that can be our best friend, but can also be a little bit of an en enemy to us, which is our daily practices. So we're going to get into that in a minute. Before we get into that, I do want to give you just a quick overview of upcoming events. This is just one thing that we do in our series of free live education that we're doing three times a week. Yes, three times a week for you guys. One hour segments. We've got Mannequin Mondays on Monday with Sam at 11 a.m. Eastern. We've got Transformation Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern. And then we have Wellness Wednesday at 4 p.m. Or sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm on the Pacific, so I always had to make that little transition in my head. But Next Monday, Sammy is going to be rolling through the mullet revival with you all, which whether you like it or not, the mullet is back. So it's time for you to jump on board or it passed by. So Sammy is going to teach you how to jump on board with that trend. Tuesday, he's actually filling in for me because I was supposed to do Tuesday, but I'm going camping. <laughs> <laughs> so Sammy's taking over um, for me on Transformation Tuesday this week. He's going to break down the basics of hairdressing, haircutting for you guys. And then next Wednesday, I have such a cool lady that's going to join me. Her name is Ronit Enos. And Ronit is a business coach specifically focused on creating wealth for people in a way that supports their lifestyle. So next week... Ronit's going to share with us how to change the story around money so that we can change this kind of paradigm that many of us get stuck in. And I'm actually one of those people. I'll be willing to admit that I get a little stuck around money. Also, big opportunity for you guys. How many of you guys would love to have a hands-on class with Sam, coronavirus approved? Come on, type it into the chat if you want a hands-on class with Sam. <laughs> so here's the good news. You have an opportunity because he's going to be doing a haircutting class with Lauren Hagen, Ruth Roach, and Adina Das on August the 23rd from 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern. Go to redkinpro.com backslash education. This isn't just a demonstration class. This is as close as you're going to get to true hands-on hairdressing in the safety of your own salon or home. So please check that out. Don't miss that event. And one final thing to mention, August 30th, we are continuing our Show Must Go On series. So we started that at the beginning of this whole coronavirus debacle because we knew that you guys still needed great education. We've got Sam via himself. We've got our <laughs> Sam via art team member. I don't know why that was so hard to get out of my mouth, but Sam via art team member, Anna Peter, she's going to be doing some long hair dressing for you. Then we have a special guest, Tippy Shorter from Mazzani and the Texperts. She is going to rock and roll on some awesome haircutting. The principle and the, the idea behind this entire show, oh yeah, I'll be there too doing some hair, but the idea of this particular show is going to be lived in precision, which Hey, I know lived in precision kind of sounds like a double entendre, but guess what? You can still have a precision mindset 
and get lived in textures and movements. So don't miss that August 30th. That's going to be at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern. So that's what's happening in the world of San Villa. But like I said, today, Wellness Wednesday, we're going to get into daily practices. So thank you all for joining me. Got lots of comments here. I just want to take a second and check in. Hi, Bernadette. Hi, Suzette. Oh, looks like Suzette's going to have to come back. Doreen's in the house. Yes. If you missed Doreen Young Love's episode of Trans or sorry, Wellness Wednesday, it was just a few weeks ago. Go back into the archives. It's super easy to find, especially on the YouTube channel, because we have a playlist of Wellness Wednesday. So make sure and go back and check out Doreen. Hi, Simone. What's up? Anna. All right, hey, Amy, Omar, Marcios, Elizabeth, Roller Girls in the house, Omar, hi, Netris, Gloria, Laura. Yeah, you're right. Tippy is fantastic. She was a host on our um, Fabric of Change event, but we didn't get to see her to do hair on that event. So we're super stoked that she's coming back with us to actually do some hair. Hey, Lorenzo, Earl's in the house. What's up, brother? So good to see you, my friend. Trina's in the house, Gloria. Cool. Well, thank you guys for joining me. I'm excited about this because, you know, here's the thing. Daily practices, again, like I said in the beginning, they can be our best friend or they can also be our worst enemy, right? So in the chat, I'm going to really ask you guys to be super interactive with this particular show because it's just me. So I don't want to feel alone over here. Um, so type in the chat for you. Are your daily practices something that you're very comfortable and very connected with, or are they very challenging to you? So just type that into the chat. Do you feel very connected, very peaceful with them? You are, have a great handle on your daily practices, or do you struggle with them just a little bit? So type that into the chat. I can tell you from my personal experience, I have both, <laughs> and I have a feeling I'll probably hear that in the chat a little bit too, but sometimes my daily practices are very in alignment. I'm super good at getting up every morning, doing my yoga, doing my meditation. I have this whole kind of ritual process I go through each day. Some days I'm great at it, and some weeks even, I still kind of suck at it. So that's going to be part of what we kind of talk about today, too. Earl's saying it's super comfortable for him. It's challenging if it's not your time to possibly do it that day. Yeah, time's always a challenge. Jackie, hey, what's up, Jackie? Glad you're here with us. A little bit of both. Anna's struggling with it. Paula, hey, from Australia. How you doing down there? <laughs> down there. <laughs> what am I saying? Debbie, sometimes challenging like to get a better handle on it. Doreen, comfy and peaceful. Yes, other days, not so much other days. Mark Seals, still developing it. Sorry, the type on my screen is a little small, guys, so I might have to bow in there a couple times. So, yeah, it sounds like a lot of us are kind of on the same page here. Some days great, sometimes not so much. So let's just kind of talk about daily practices in general. Again, in the chat, what kind of practices do you do on a daily basis? So, Laura, good question. What practices? <laughs> Leone, just wanted to say, because of meeting you guys, some techniques got a thousand times each easier. Very cool. Thanks, Leone. Appreciate that. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> Christina, always late, so both, yeah. So type into the chat, what kind of things are you guys doing on a daily basis that you would consider a daily practice? Because let's think about this. We've got lots of different kinds of daily practices, right? Some daily practices are very physical, right? So what are some physical daily practices we might do? It might be some exercise, might be yoga, might be just getting up and taking a walk, which I Yes, that kind of, you would think of that as exercise. Um, also, things that just take care of us on a physical level. So there might be a daily practice that you have around food. Because I know that there's been kind of a switch, luckily, within 
dieting where it's not so much about like, okay, here's your diet plan. This is how you have to eat, dot, dot, dot. But there's a lot more mindfulness, I feel, as I'm hearing more about dieting in general and how to take care of our diet. So maybe you even have a daily practice that involves preparing your food. So yeah, just keep popping them in there. I'm just super curious on what you guys do. Um, Beth just jumps into emails. <laughs> We're going to work on that, Beth. Don't worry. <laughs> Doreen says meditation. Hey, Adina, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Trina, workout every day, morning tea in the quiet to think. Oof, love that. Um, Jackie's making her bed every day, working out. Very cool. Earl, definitely depends on how I wake up, but remembering who I am by smiling, stretching, moving work on some meditation, journaling, visualization, breath work, gratitude. Yeah, fantastic. Loving it. Kathy, shower, eat breakfast, work, stretch, paint in the night, paint in the night before bed. Oh, cool. So you're actually doing some daily practice in the evenings for before bed, which love that. Timing is very cool. Healthy keto breakfast with new tropics. Ooh, all right. You piqued my interest. <laughs> I want to know what new tropics is. Quick runs, walk several times a day with the shepherds. Oh, so cute. We've got shepherds too. Exercise, Doreen. Making wigs on the daily. Yes, very cool. Leone. I want to make sure I get that right. Leone says making wigs on the daily. High dose of vitamin D. Yes. I've actually been doing my yoga on the back deck shirtless because I just got done with this podcast, actually on the Sacred Sons podcast, Earl, that he was talking about the importance of vitamin D that we actually absorb through the skin. So definitely getting some vitamin D in there, walking, movement, very cool. So lots of physical things, but there's also lots of things that you guys mentioned that are very mental oriented, right? Also emotional. And of course, my personal favorite, spiritual, right, Doreen? <laughs> Can't live without that. So lots of different places that these physical, or sorry, these daily practices feed us in our life. And I think that's what's really key here is to make that connection of why are you doing this, this daily practice? So um, one of the things that I'd like you to take note of too, you might have some things that you're already doing that you're not necessarily taking note of that are kind of daily practices. So why would that be important to take note of is because when we take notice that we have these things that are present in our lives that are feeding us and helping us and supporting us, taking note to them and honoring those as our daily practices, as our daily events, I think is really key. So, you know, it might even just be doing puzzles with your children because as far as mental goes, there's great studies on how play, doing puzzles, problem solving, really helps with cognitive support. And especially because we know that there's this new kind of, you know, uh, understanding of the neuroplasticity within the intelligences, continuing to do these things that challenge us mentally, which even could just be general conversation, they're really important to continuing to keep mental health, especially as we get older. That's something that's so key and it's something that they've done a lot of research on, especially within nursing homes. The more that within nursing homes, they keep people interactive and playing and doing these things on a daily basis, keep up these daily practice of interactivity, keeping the mind challenged. That really helps with things like Alzheimer's and dementia. So um, super important to make sure we have daily practices that are not just about the physical form, but it's also about what's happening up here and here and here. So of course, then we have the emotional support, which you know can be very linked, I think, to a lot of the spiritual things that we, we talk about, things like yoga and meditation, prayer, setting an intention in your day, doing mantras, um, 
different rituals. In fact, m my wife and I, we, uh, we kind of try and change those things up. And she's really good at finding new little rituals to do each day. And she just found this one that's been really cool. So you take a small candle and you take something, maybe like a needle or a knife or something. And in that candle, you set up your intentions. Like you can draw pictures into the candle. You can write words or intentions into the candle. And you find an essential oil that represents those intentions. You apply that essential oil to the candle then light the candle, burn the candle while you sit and just visualize or meditate on those intentions. And it's, it's great to kind of switch things up a bit with those rituals because it, it ignites something different each time. So and we'll, we'll kind of talk a bit more about that in just a bit, but keeping things fresh. Taking care of mom, keeping her daily practices consistent and new-ish is a big deal. Yes, for sure, my friend. And I think that's one of the things we'll talk about too, is kind of engaging our family and friends into our practices, I think is so key as well. Because not only does that help keep us motivated, it helps keep them motivated. Anytime we can involve the, the community, anytime we can kind of get the village together, that's gonna be fantastic, which I know that's challenging right now. So, you know, do it safely. Hey, Ormar, how are you? Yeah, it'd be in the same mind, body, spirit. So nootropics help with cognition, memory, recall, and mood, among other things. Check out the nootropics reviewer on YouTube. So if you have not heard of nootropics, write, some, write that down. It might be something for us all to check out. I'm definitely going to look into it. Twan is saying, yes, spirituality. Anna, prayers of Jesus early in the morning. Very cool. <clears throat> Kathy is saying I need to exercise a little more. Yeah, especially with things like anxiety, exercise is so key, so key. So um, we'll we'll talk about this a little bit too, because we're going to talk in a minute about the challenges and the solutions to challenges with these daily practices. So stay tuned for that, of course. Heather's saying lay in bed to the last possible minute. Sleep in, so important. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Love my matcha tea and your protein bar. Perfection. Love it. And that's the thing, Heather, you know, like some people might say, well, well, sleeping in isn't a daily ritual. Hey, getting good sleep is so incredibly important. So that's one of the things too. like, don't judge the, the practice. If it's working for you and it makes you healthy and it keeps you feeling good, then it's right. That's what works, right? Yeah, Dina, candle magic. <laughs> Adele, how, how often am I cleaning and sanitizing your shears? Well, hopefully every single client, especially right now. <laughs> All right, so let's let's kind of dig into the challenges because this is this is definitely the key to this conversation. I, I think we all agree that having some kind of daily practice is important to us, whether again, it's for physical health, mental health, emotional, spiritual, whatever it might be. We all know that these things are incredibly important. So what are some of the things, let's type into the chat, what are some of the things that challenge you to stay consistent or get into daily practices? So type those into the chat. Lori, you're saying you're writing four or five things, grateful for four in the mornings and night. Yes, huge. Earl said that earlier too. There was a couple other of you that mentioned gratitude. Simple gratitude journals, gratitude writing, just some type of presence with what we are grateful for is so incredibly important, especially to our serotonin levels. There's a direct correlation to gratitude messages and what happens here in the heart with your serotonin levels, which is that happy, uplifting, good feeling uh, chemical that we ignite within the body. So simple gratitude. And hey, guys, let's face it. If you have a house to sleep in, you have something to be grateful for. If you have food on your table, you have something to be grateful for. And I know we're in challenging times. 
And for, for some of you, I'm sure that there it's more challenging than others. Maybe there's illness happening. Maybe there's um, financial struggles right now. So um, trust me, and definitely feel that. Yet at the same time, it's so important, even in, as well, not just in those times, especially in times that we're having those difficulties in our life. It's so incredibly important to shift that energy within within us. And one of the best ways to do that is to engage into that part of your heart that feels compassion, that feels empathy. And then you can engage that space of pure gratitude for even if it's that bite of food, even if it's just that bed to sleep in, that engages something inside of you and shifts that energy for you. So definitely gratitude is huge for us. Yeah, Earl's saying time is definitely a challenge. <laughs> Twanda's saying good sleep is important. Don't judge that practice for sure. Trina's saying kids and their needs. Yes, for sure. I don't have children. We do have dogs, which, you know, can be a little needy, but not as needy as children. <laughs> um, we own, uh, I think that's what you said. I have to keep checking because your name on the screen is not your same name, but I want to... Leone, yes, okay, Leone. Leone's saying working out, need to stay on a schedule. It's hard to stay on that schedule. Yes, Leone, for sure. Kathy saying it's good to be grateful for the little things. Adele, so many things you want to do but can't. Probably a timing thing, right? <laughs> Laura's saying staying up late gets in my way. Good, good recognition. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jamie. I appreciate that. Really does change a person's energy being grateful. Yes, for sure. So definitely some of those challenges that we run into with our daily practices, time is probably one of the biggest ones that we all face. And commitment, <laughs> that's another one that can be extremely challenging. Um, I think a lot of times the issue really isn't our time and commitment. It's lack of interest or lack of focus on what we really want. It's either lack of interest in the practice or lack of focus on what the intent is behind it. Because a lot of times we just get wrapped up in the process. We know that we should exercise. We know that we should eat healthy. We know that we should have time for good rest. We should have time for all these different things, meditation, yoga, exercise, da, 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 da. We know that we should do those things. But if you have no interest in yoga and you don't see any real mm, heartfelt purpose to it, how likely is it that you're going to show up for yoga class four or five times a week. Very unlikely. So um, there's there's that part in us that I think we uh, tend to, um, I don't wanna say excuse because it's not an excuse that you don't have time, but if it's something that you're passionate about, it's something that you're excited about and you have connection to, the time seems to find itself and we're more motivated to eke out that time. If it feels like a chore, especially things like exercise routines, because I think that's a really common one that people really struggle with is an exercise routine. If your exercise routine just feels like a chore, if it feels hard to get up and go down in the basement or out in the yard or wherever you do your exercise process right, right now while a lot of gyms are closed, if it feels like a chore to do those things, your likelihood of staying committed to it are really low and your likelihood of finding that you don't have time for it is really high <laughs> because you're going to prioritize something else over top of it. Hope that makes sense. And I think that that's something that's important for us to uh, check in with because if our excuse is that we don't have time, then we're just going to continue to not have time. But if we check in a little bit deeper and we say, no, actually, it's because I freaking hate this exercise routine and I really don't want to do it. So I will find something to fill that time instead. That's kind of a different challenge, isn't it? 
So it's a different thing to address. The other thing I want to, to also bring up that I think is something that comes up a lot with my coaching clients is things like perfectionism, impatience, and just setting really overwhelming goals for ourselves that might not necessarily be achievable in the short term. So again, we find ourselves not having time to do these things, not having the motivation to do these things. And a lot of times it's because we look at what we're trying to achieve through that process and it seems so lofty. So our perfectionism kicks in. It's like, uh, well, I'm never gonna look like this. I'm never gonna have that body. I'm never gonna have that spiritual awakening. I'm never gonna have dot, 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 dot. So we keep feeding ourselves these negative statements. And again, if our perception is that it's this lofty way off in the distance goal that's never really probably gonna happen, then again, the likelihood of us following through with those kinds of practices, pretty low, right? So let's check in with your comments here. <clears throat> All right. Sorry. Let me find these. Heather is saying, I try to take a long walk every other night along with the guided meditation. Very cool. Love to know a good self-help book you might recommend. I'll definitely talk about that, Heather. Mindfulness all the way, April. Lack of focus to wonder, right? Being tired after work, taking care of daughter, being easily distracted, Hannah. And so maybe, Hannah, some of those things I just brought up, maybe that might speak to you because... Again, if we're kind of coming home from work, we're already, you know, we had a long, hard day. Kids need us. Different things need our attention. It's easy to uh, not get that sense of motivation to approach something if it's something we're just not really interested in, if it's something that we feel like is a chore. The, the other thing, too, is, is that um, sometimes what really gets in our way, too, is just judgment. It could be judgment from within. It could be fear of judgment from outside. You know, I've talked to people that want to start a certain practice, but they look at the practice and they say, well, but I don't, I don't want to be the stupid kid that's like the new guy in the class that looks like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So there's that fear of that judgment from that community that you're the new kid on the block or you don't belong there. And again, these are things that I think it's important to check in with because if we're not finding time, if we're not finding motivation, which is typically what people find is the biggest challenge with creating good practices, that we have to address first. If there's concerns of judgment, self-judgment, perfectionism, things like that that are in our way, we have to look at those first. Because if we just kind of keep trying to uh, you're, gosh, man, like, why can't you stick with this exercise program? Why can't you just keep eating healthy? Why can't you do this, that, and the other thing? All we're doing is beating up on ourselves at that point. So, um, we have to address the judgment of ourselves so that we can get committed to those practices. Yeah. Kathy, I, I think most of the time we judge ourselves much more than uh, people from the outside actually are judging us because typically what we perceive as other people judging us, I, this might be a little harsh, but most of the time is us judging ourselves. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that there's the haters out there that like to talk some act and, you know, there's kind of this thing on, especially on the internet where people love to just say whatever they want. But for the most part, I think that when we look outside and we think, oh, that person's judging me. Oh, they just looked at me this certain way. A lot of times those are stories we're telling within ourselves. So just check in with that a little bit. Kathy's saying, always the new kid and okay with that, even though I'm older. You know, I, I actually am with you with Eric, Kathy. That was something that was important to me personally at one point when I started to go to Aikido which I didn't start Aikido until just a few years ago. And it was it was kind of scary because I walked into a dojo that had tons and tons of people that were super high ranking. 
So it was pretty intimidating at first. But then I, I realized that that was kind of part of what I needed because here in the hair industry, you know, I've been in the hair industry for 21 years now. And so I don't necessarily walk into a room in, inside the hair industry and feel like I'm the new kid anymore. And there's something exciting about that feeling. And I try to, to kind of harness that feeling now, even when I do walk into a hair situation, because there's something really refreshing about like, yeah, I'm kind of like the new kid in this room. So I'm with you there. Cool. So, hey, Cindy, thanks for joining us. Ina, love that. Patience, presence, and persistence pays. That's a lot of P's. <laughs> and that's why it sounds awesome and it's easy to remember, right? Patience, presence, and persistence. Those are things that are so incredibly key for sure. So let, let's talk about solutions now, because I think that we understand that there's some challenges with creating these practices. So let's get into some solutions, right? So um, one thing I think that's important to clarify for yourself is what type of person you are. Because the one thing that I, I think, especially within the self-help world, can, can actually be quite defeating is the expectation of how you should, should <laughs> go through these practices and how often you should do them and how dedicated to them you should be. Now, some of you, especially if you're kind of a little bit more intense personality, kind of higher energy, you like potentially strict discipline. Like you like that, okay, I wake up at 5 a.m., I'm out the door by 5.15, I'm at the gym at 5.30, do this particular workout for this exact time, I'm back at my house at this exact time, I do this, 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 and this, and you have a very disciplined routine. Some personalities thrive on discipline. If you are someone that thrives on discipline, put discipline into the comments for me. So if you're someone that loves that sense of discipline, loves to be kind of held accountable to disciplined routine, put that into the comments. There's also some of you that that type of structure is, is not efficient for you. It feels that's actually what creates the sense of um, like turning it almost into a job that you kind of hate is it's so disciplined. It's so rude. It's so rote that it becomes something you have to do versus something that you want to do. The desire starts to disappear. So if you're someone that's kind of more of a let it flow kind of a personality and that discipline actually doesn't feel good to you type, let it flow into the chat. <laughs> yeah, my wife Michelle just this just typed in my our coach, my coach, and and she's worked with her as well, uh, Lynn Christian, who also has a well. She wasn't on Wellness Wednesday. She was on the earlier form of it, which was called Cabin Fever. Which if you haven't seen that one, I would highly recommend going and watching Lynn's episode two. But she would always say, "Don't shut all over yourself." <laughs> because that is exactly what we tend to do, right? Put all these shoulds on ourselves. Simone's saying, definitely a, a disciplined person. Joanne Elizabeth Winters is a disciplined boring <laughs> person. Simone's saying, that's boring. That's not boring. Discipline is not boring. Jackie's saying, discipline most days. Rosanna's saying, let it flow. April's letting it flow. Heather's letting it flow. We only is letting it flow. Laura's a let it flow. Adina, Doreen is let it flow. Yes, Kathy's on that page. So um, for a lot of you, you're that let it flow person. And so these high expectations, super disciplined routines can actually be quite defeating to, to you. I just wrote an article for Medium and they were asking for the top five non-intuitive tips for better health. One of my top ones was stop doing so much <laughs> because we place these expectations on ourselves that are so overwhelming 
and we try and uphold ourselves to them that we just burn ourselves out. And when you're burned out, guess what? Staying on track is going to be really, really difficult. So um, if you are a strict discipline person, fantastic. Having a schedule and sticking to it, God bless you. I love you. I'm so happy for you. I wish I could be that way, honestly. But I just recently finally discovered that that doesn't work for me. It just doesn't. I've never been able to stick to a, a discipline routine. And I would always beat myself up because I'd say, gosh, man, why can't you be more disciplined? Why can't you be more structured? But as soon as I realized that that was the thing in and of itself, that was creating the roadblock for me, my practices have become so much more consistent because I flow with it. Some days I get up and so, so here's what I do. This is just my personal way that has worked for me. I have a baseline expectation of myself. Those baseline expectations are small. So for a lot of you, Part of the challenge that you're facing is that you're trying to take on way too much. So for me, I have a baseline of, I, I, I do a certain type of yoga called shadow yoga. And there's kind of a warm up process within shadow yoga that takes about 15, maybe 20 minutes at most. That's my baseline, 15, 20 minutes of yoga. Now, I leave myself plenty of time that if I'm feeling it, I have time to go for an hour. So when my, my friend Sean Float, who also was on a Cabin Fever episode that you can check out, he's also my yoga teacher. And so yesterday he asked me, like, you know, how's your, how's your yoga practice? I was like, well, six or seven days a week, I do the warm up really consistently. It feels great. Three to four days a week. I do my whole routine start to finish, do a full hour, hour and 15 minutes sometimes if I have a little bit more space in my schedule. But for me, having just a simple basic baseline that I know is super achievable, that gets me in the right place. Then if I'm feeling it, I continue to flow and continue to move through it. Same thing with meditation. Sometimes Michelle and I have the time to sit down and do our very kind of road routine or not road, but ritualized process of meditation. We do some offerings. We have you know some different herbs that we burn and stuff to, to bring in different things into our meditation. And it's, you know, it's a bit of a practice. So sometimes we get to it because we have time. And then other times we just don't. But the most important thing is that if you don't, you don't beat yourself up about it because I guarantee you beating yourself up and shaming yourself because you didn't follow through on it isn't going to help you get up the next morning. It might, well, let me change that. It might help you get up tomorrow, but is it going to help you get up the next day, the next day, the next day, and the next day with actually joy and passion for the process? Guilt doesn't do that. Shame doesn't do that. So um, what we have to do is become accepting of the things that we are inconsistent with. Acceptance does not mean approval. Make that clear. Acceptance does not make, this does not mean approval because you're not saying, hey, good job. You slacked off today. What you're doing is saying, hmm, okay, I didn't do it today. Accept it. It is what it is. It happened hours ago. You beating yourself up about it is not going to help. What does help is saying, okay, well, let's find some passion for it tomorrow now. Instead of, you better get up and do it tomorrow so you don't slack off again. Mm, doesn't help, does it? So <clears throat> if you're that kind of person that wants that kind of more flow with it, Try setting some baseline practices in place that it's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to sit down for five minutes and just breathe. That might be your meditation practice. Each day, I'm just going to sit and just focus on my breath for five minutes. Do you know how many studies there are about how valuable 
five minutes of mindful breath are each day, it doesn't, you don't have to become a yogi. You don't have to become a meditation teacher. You don't have to be boot on the mountain to plug little bite-sized chunks into the day. You know, Beth, if you're still watching, before you start the emails, give yourself a timer and say, okay, I'm going to just sit and just focus on my breath for five minutes before I open this first email. That is so powerful and so valuable and so achievable that it's something that can easily start to get into your routine. Now, guess what happens? Each time you do it, you notice, your body notices, your subconscious notices, hmm, wow, I feel really good after that five minutes. Maybe tomorrow I want to do 10 minutes. Guess what? You're motivated now. <laughs> you're, you're triggering your, your natural response system to say, hmm, yeah, this is good. I like this. I'm going to do more of it. So um, these bite-sized chunks are such a fantastic way to build more consistency within your practice over time. <laughs> good. She's still here. Awesome. Tom, yes, you most, you absolutely can drink whiskey. In fact, um, the yoga guru that created Shadow Yoga, he believes that whiskey can help burn out some of the darkness. So um, yes, go for it. <laughs> Trina, you're saying yes, yes. I love that. I heard on a podcast this week that your morning routine sets you up for better sleep as well as neurologically. 100%, yes. So um, one of the things that's very powerful is that you can have morning routines, you can have afternoon routines, you can have evening routines, which I would highly recommend finding a different routine for your evening than uh, sitting and playing on your phone. And there's lots and lots and lots of research to support this. Your sleep will change, I promise you. Put the phone down half an hour at least before bedtime. Blue light exposure, the types of points in, within your neurological system that it activates, not a great setup for sleep. So um, yeah, what you do in the morning, what you do in the afternoon, what you do in the evening, our day is holistic. Holistic isn't just a healthcare term. Holistic is who we are. The entire way through your day, you're setting up everything. There's, um, there's a great app called the Calm app. And on that app, there's guided meditations and things like that. So um, that might be an opportunity to do something different before bed. But the reason I bring it up is, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Really famous basketball player, um, LeBron James. So LeBron James actually has this series about him and how he uses different kinds of mindfulness and meditation and things like that to improve his effectiveness on the court, which I thought was so cool. And one of the major, major things he talks about is how important the quality of sleep is. And he definitely has daily practices, daily rituals, specifically around sleep, specifically around naps that he takes before games. So... You know, having practices to, to help our, our um, sleep systems are, is so key. Yeah, Trina said LeBron. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Adina, holistic. I love that. Yes. Trina says, yeah, they said keep away from phones, emails for a half an hour in the morning and at least a half hour before bed. Scientifically proven. So um, I'll tell you, for me, I have kind of a rule. I do not open my phone until I'm ready to start to use it. So I don't know if that makes sense, but so my phone does sit on my nightstand because I do use it as alarm. And, you know, hey, if my mom needs to call me in the middle of the night because something's happening or something, I want it to be close by. So I do keep this close by. So what I do first thing in the morning, I actually keep it face down. I unplug it. I don't look at the screen. I take it out into the living room or actually out into the dining room and I put it in the dining room so it doesn't disturb Michelle because she likes to sleep in a little later than I do. And I do not pick this thing up and look at the screen until I'm ready to start to reply. So what happens is 
if you wake up and the first thing you do is grab this off your nightstand, take a look at it, what just happened? You just triggered so many processes. Oh yeah, I have to do this today. I have to do that. I have to do that. So having that first 30 minutes of your day to keep this mind clear because you're kind of coming out of a meditative state of sleep, you can kind of continue that peacefulness much further into your morning if that's not the first thing that happens. So just a little side recommendation for you. The other thing that's, I, I think, going to be super helpful for um, creating more consistent practices, there's a couple of things. Community, so important. And I'm well aware that <laughs> community is a little tougher at this moment, but there's so many people doing Zoom classes for yoga sessions, Zoom classes for meditation, Zoom classes for every type of physical training that you could ever want. There's so many online communities that we can connect to right now. It's not perfect, especially for me. I like more of a personal connection, but it's present. It's there. So get that community aspect going because it also helps with some accountability, right? If your best friend and you and say, hey, let's start taking the Zoom class online or something. It's a little easier to show up, isn't it? Because you have that accountability partner to give you that extra motivation. Also, I know that for many of you, the challenge is things like uh, time with family, children's needs, things like that. This is where you can enroll the family. Get the kids enrolled. Maybe they, you know, it might be more of a fun yoga practice. It might be a little more goofy, lighthearted, but get the kids enrolled with the yoga practice or the exer exercise practice or the mindfulness practice. And there's some really cool research. If you have time, go on and look up mindfulness for children. Introducing children to mindfulness meditation and focus and breath work and stuff. Super, super powerful stuff. So get the, you know, get the family enrolled. <laughs> My wife just, just commented guilty because she does do the thing of pick up the phone first thing in the morning. That's okay. Love you anyway. <laughs> but I think most importantly, you need to find your thing. Because again, if the exercise program isn't enticing to you, if the meditation program isn't enticing to you, if the food choices aren't enticing to you, it, dot, 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 the likelihood of you staying committed to those daily practices and having those become part of who you are and part of what you do, most likely not going to happen. So find your thing. And here's what I hear all the time. And, that, you know, I'll ask some of my coaching clients, well, you know, have, have you ever tried meditation? Have you tried any mindfulness practices, any breath work? Oh, yeah, I tried to meditate once. It sucked. I hate just sitting there. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Just sitting there might suck, but there are so many different ways to meditate. And to be honest, meditation has become such a bastardized term, but really what anything that is going to bring the mind into a focus on something healthy is great for you. That's why mindfulness and breath work are almost preferable terms for, for a lot of this stuff because all the, you know, guided meditation apps, all those things, are they true meditation from an esoteric terminology standpoint? No, they're actually not. But what they are, or they are so good for your, your mental space and your heart space and your intuition, and your spiritual connection. So find the thing that speaks to you. You know, it might be LeBron James. It might be a uh, Teek Nhat An. It might be, you know, dot, dot, dot. Anyway, you get the point. There's a ton of different forms. Same thing, you know, I'll ask people like, hey, have you ever explored yoga? Oh, yeah, I went to a yoga class one time. I'm not into that stuff. Like all this breathing and chanting and, you know, people are doing breath of fire. <laughs> That's one form of yoga, <laughs> you know? That, and if it's not your thing, there's power yoga, there's this yoga, there's that yoga. And again, for uh, the yoga purists out there, I get it. 
it's not the original form yet is it healthy for someone to go and to move their body and to be mindful of their body and to move in a certain way get more limber get more strength whatever probably more so than sitting on the couch so <laughs> we all have to find our way we have to find our thing so <clears throat> i think if you can be more fair with yourself if you can find something that actually speaks to you and you can have more realistic expectations because here's the thing if the practice is only for an end goal again that's setting yourself up for failure if you're only going to the gym to lose a certain uh, you know number of pounds i talk to my mom all the time about this get rid of the scale because if your exercise routine if your eating routine is about losing a, a certain number of pounds and then once you hit that point everything else is going to be great that's challenging to uh, turn into something that's real something that's actually changed your lifestyle because we're just working towards this end point same thing with something like even meditation don't meditate to become enlightened <laughs> that's not the point meditation is just something that continually brings something to us and it doesn't have to be this point on the mountain that you're looking up towards in fact that's probably going to be the frustrating part because day after day after day it's going to be like oh well actually yeah today felt great and you know sometimes you might even get into a true kind of meditative state where you're like whoo man i'm in this really peaceful space guess what the next day is not going to be the same thing so if it's always for an end result, when you don't get that end result, that creates frustration. And again, that's what interrupts that flow of just great flow of your daily practice. So that's really what I have for you today. I, I wanted to kind of check in with your comments because I want to keep this conversational. I'd also love to hear if there are some things that you took away from today, maybe one or two things that you're going to implement into what's going to happen next because hey here's the thing if you just spent the last 54 minutes hanging out with me and talking about this stuff but nothing actually happens any differently from this point maybe this 54 minutes was beneficial maybe it wasn't so type into the chat what's something that you feel like you can take and do something different moving forward yeah dina it's not a one and done experience for sure Oh, thanks, April. <laughs> thanks, Tara. You're awesome. 12.30 midnight in UK, April. Whoa, thanks for watching so lately. Doreen, absolutely helpful. Whatever we start with, we can keep connecting, and it moves us towards what is our thing for sure. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, April, children are getting too stressed at a young age, for sure. So having that, having some kind of practice to get them into mindfulness, breath work, it's, man, it, it can be really beneficial. And actually, another coach that I had on, uh, was she the first person I had on Cabin Fever? I think we, we had her on the very first one, uh, Dr. Suzanne Henwood. She actually specifically has books about multiple brain integration for kids, which if you want to be completely blown away, <laughs> blown away by someone, definitely look up Dr. Suzanne Henwood. You can go to the very first Cabin Fever again. If you go to our YouTube channel, we have a playlist with all the previous Cabin Fevers, all the previous Wellness Wednesdays. You can check her out and there's connect ways to connect with her through that. Kathy's saying, starting to learn meditation now. Um, doctor suggested using some meditation music, Alexa app. Nice. Yes. Great. That's so cool. There's so many opportunities with you know, our technology that can actually put us into that space. I'm glad it's working for you. That's killer. Uh, thanks for watching, Bernadette. Love the, love the smileys. <laughs> Cool, cool. Just checking on your comments here. 
because I want to make sure we keep this conversational. Kathy is checking in with going, getting off the phone before going to bed, before it, and giving some space before you wake up. Yes, yes. Cool. Oh, Lynn Christian, thank you for popping in. I appreciate you too, Roller Girl. So, um, Bernadette, this is good. If not consistent, it will not continue for a good benefit to you. That's so true, love. Very true. So, um, hopefully, this was beneficial to you. The, to me, this is something that I struggled with for so long. Lynn can attest to this. We have had so many conversations about just having great daily practices and struggling with, you know, getting up early, exercise this, meditation that. The best thing I've ever done for myself is to recognize that when I am compassionate with myself, when I give myself the same empathy that I share with others, and I just set realistic baseline goals for things instead of these huge, lofty, overwhelming kind of goals, for me personally, I'm so much more successful, I'm so much more happy, and I'm so much more present in those practices. And for some of you, I know that it's the opposite. For some of you, that really disciplined approach with regular schedules and really lofty goals, that's the way you get motivated. So again, we each have to find our thing, we each have to find that sense for ourselves. And guess what, if it works for you, that's the truth. So. Next Wednesday, again, I've got, um, <clears throat> I, like, I want to say her name correctly, Ramit Enos coming on. She's going to be talking about the money mindset. We're also going to really talk about her story. She was born in Israel, moved here when she was, I think, 16 or 18 years old, served in the Israeli army, um, built a salon, closed it all up, and now um, lives part-time in an Airstream trailer with her husband, doing what she loves and making a fantastic living, just working at, you know, shorter hours and traveling and doing all these great things. So you guys are gonna love her. She is such a passionate, awesome human being. So we're gonna talk a bit about her story, talk about how to change this thing around that money mindset. She's got some great tips for you. So make sure you join us next Wednesday again at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss Manic and Monday next week with Sammy to learn how to upgrade the mullet and get on the trend. I know some of you just every time you hear that, you're like, oh, God, mullet. But hey, it's back and it's cool. So <laughs> next Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern, you're going to learn the mullet with Sammy. Transformation Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, he's going to take you back to some foundations and basics. And then also, if you weren't here in the beginning, big reminder, he does have a hands-on cutting class with our friend Adina, Ruth Roach, and Lauren Hagen. Holy crap, I want to be in that class. You can do a hands-on class with these four people in the comfort of your own home, in the comfort of your salon, in the safety of not having to travel across the United States right now. So um, if you want hands-on education, August 23rd from 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern, head to redkinpro.com backslash education to get signed up. There are limited seats for that class, so make sure you get over there and sign up soon. It's actually quite affordable, especially for a hands-on class with those four powerhouses all together. So make sure you check that out. On August 30th, we definitely want to invite you back too for more free live education with the show must go on three. This one's going to be about lived-in precision with haircutting and styling and finishing. You've got Sammy on board. You've got our art team member, Anna Peters, doing some styling and finishing. We have our special guest, Tippy Shorter from Masani and the Texperts, uh, Texpert Collective. She, If you haven't seen this woman, make sure you get to the show on the 30th because she's fantastic. And I might just do a haircut for you too. So again, August 30th, that's going to start at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please join us for that. We're going to keep all of this free live education rolling three days a week, plus some um, for however long we need to, to make sure that during this challenging time, you get to stay educated, 
inspired and happy and healthy. So thanks guys for watching. Thank you so much for all the support and conversation tonight. I didn't feel alone at all. I felt like I had a, a huge community out there with me tonight. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the from the Sambia community. I'll see you next Wednesday. Take care.